A Guide to Growing Cucumbers Technically, cucumbers are fruits, but they're prepared and eaten as vegetables. Though they are made up of 95% water, cukes contain a lot of nutritious vitamins and minerals. They're low in calories, too. Whether in a salad, on a sandwich, or pickled, this crop makes for a versatile, healthy snack. Cucumber Varieties There are three main varieties of cucumber that can be grown, depending on their use. Pickling This variety has short fruits, 3 to 4 inches, 7 to 10 centimeters, thin skins, and vines. The fruit has a dotted color pattern, ranging from dark green at the stem to light green at the blossom end. It's usually ready to harvest earlier than slicing varieties, but its harvest window only lasts 7 to 10 days. Slicing Its long fruits, 7 to 8 inches, 17.7 .7 to 20 centimeters, have a thick skin, and their color is usually a consistent dark green. They take longer to become harvest ready, but their harvest window can typically last about 4 to 6 weeks. Vining and bush varieties Vining varieties bear more fruit, but they take up a lot more space. They can, however, be trained to grow up a trellis. Bush varieties produce fruits a bit earlier than vining varieties and are easier to maintain and harvest. Cucumber seeds can germinate both with or without light. This means they can produce their first leaves either while covered with soil or when they're just slightly pressed into the soil. For best germination results, their ideal soil temperature ranges from 65 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, 18 to 32 degrees Celsius. Here's how to start cucumber seeds. Step 1. When starting seeds inside, do so about 3 to 4 weeks before transplanting in 2-inch, 5-centimeter pots with 3 seeds per pot. Step 2. When starting seeds outside, they can be planted about 1 to 1 and a half inches. 2.5 to 3.8 centimeters deep. Either sow them 2 inches, 5 centimeters apart, in rows that are 5 to 6 feet, 1.5 to 1.8 meters apart, or sow 3 to 6 seeds in hills that are 3 to 5 feet, 91 centimeters to 1.5 meters apart. Step 3. When the seedlings are about 1 to 2 inches, 2.5 to 5 centimeters tall, they should be thinned to the strongest plant. Note. Avoid planting in spots that recently had melons, pumpkins, or squash growing. These crops are in the same family as cucumbers, cucurbits, and can increase the risk of disease infection. Cucumbers prefer soils with a pH of 6.0 to 6.8. Here's how to care for cucumbers. Step 1. Cucumbers are very sensitive to cold so they need warm soil and air as well as full sun. The minimum air temperature tolerance is around 60 degrees Fahrenheit, 15 degrees Celsius. Step 2. Cucumbers are a heavy nitrogen feeder, so provide them with nutrients by using enough fertilizer. Step 3. When the plants have about 2 to 3 true leaves, thin them to be 8 to 15 inches, 20 to 38 centimeters apart, in rows, or separate to 2 to 3 plants per hill. Step 4. Cucumbers will need 1 to 2 inches of water per week, and it's important to avoid water stress, too little water. This will cause the fruits to become bitter and misshapen. Step 5. When watering, try to keep the plant's leaves as dry as possible and only water the soil. This will help prevent any diseases from festering. Step 6. Fruits that are not properly pollinated will be small and shriveled so those will need to be removed from the plant. Step 7. Keep plants well-picked to increase their production. Most of them will keep producing until the weather cools down. Since cucumbers are heavy feeders, it's helpful to work compost or well-rotted manure into the soil before planting. After the vines have developed leaves, side dress each plant with 3 to 4 tablespoons of a nitrogen fertilizer, sprinkling it around each plant. Then water it into the soil and side dress again once the plants start to flower. As well, mulches conserve water, improve air circulation, and keep weeds away from cucumber plants. Natural mulches like wood chips, grass clippings, or straw are all great options to use and apply any mulch before the plants start growing vines.
Seedlings should have one to two true leaves and be well watered before transplanting. When hardening off, avoid exposing the cucumbers to cold temperatures. Their minimum air tolerance is 60 degrees Fahrenheit or 15 degrees Celsius. Start by moving the crop outside for a couple of hours each day, keeping it in a sheltered spot at first, where it won't be directly exposed to harsh winds or full sunlight. The process of hardening off will toughen the cucumber plants up and get them ready to keep growing outside. Once they're ready, transplants should be placed two feet, 60 centimeters apart, in rows that are four feet, 1.20 meters apart. Just take care not to damage the roots of the cucumber plants during the transplanting process. Beans fix nitrogen in the soil, which will benefit cucumber plants. Radish will prevent most pests, while corn can work as a trellis for cucumber vines to climb. As well, dill helps to attract predator insects. Other great planting companions are all brassicas, celery, onions, peas, and tomatoes. Potatoes and sage should be avoided because cucumbers are quite sensitive to aromatic herbs. In a large garden, cucumber vines can easily spread on the ground, but when growing in a smaller garden, there are several options that allow the vines to climb while growing. A wire attached to a wall. When there is a wall next to the growing area, a wire can be attached to the wall with the other end anchored in the soil. The vines can then be trained to climb along the wire. Just make sure the growing spot doesn't interfere with other plants that need full sunlight. Wire cage. Typically a cylindrical or squared shape, its walls support the plant as it grows upright. Build some hills around the wires in the ground, then set the seedlings or transplants. The cage itself can be made of heavy wire that's used to reinforce concrete, or wide mesh fencing can work too. With mesh fencing, the cage will need additional support, either from wooden stakes or iron rods. Trellis. A trellis comes in various shapes and sizes, so it's best to choose one that fits the size of the garden and planting area. It's usually built using two stable wooden or iron poles with squared wires, iron stalks, or wood in between the two. Note, train cucumber vines to use these arrangements by carefully twining them to the material as soon as they're tall enough. These options are great because when the fruits aren't lying on the ground, they're less exposed to diseases and pests. As well, trellises and other vining structures improve air circulation, which also helps to reduce diseases. Plus, it makes harvesting a whole lot easier. Set these structures up before planting to avoid any damage to the plants. There will be a difference in the shape of the cucumbers, depending on whether they grew vertically or horizontally. Cucumbers grown on the ground have curled or round shapes, while ones that hang from vines grow fairly straight. Pinch back any plants that grow beyond their structure, as this encourages an even growth. Note, these structures can also be used in raised beds, but raised beds also work for growing cucumber plants directly on the ground. They'll improve soil drainage and make it a lot easier to maintain the cukes. Potential pests and their solutions. Aphids. These tiny pests come in a variety of colors, green, black, red, light orange, or yellow, and mainly feed on the undersides of leaves and stems. What they're actually feeding on is the sap in plants, which ends up causing the plants damage. Aphids also leave behind a sticky substance called honeydew, and they are a pest that's known to spread diseases. Aphids can be tolerated by most plants when their numbers are low, but if there's a lot of aphids, they can stunt a plant's growth and cause a plant's leaves to turn yellow and fall off. Here's what to do. For the most part, plants can handle mild aphid infestations. But if they're found, a strong jet of water from a garden hose will wash them off the plants. Spraying plants with water should be done early in the morning so that the plants can dry off during the day. Sticky traps, neem oil, insecticidal soaps, and horticultural oils are also effective against aphids. Just be sure to follow the application instructions on the packaging. 
Oftentimes, you can also get rid of aphids by wiping or spraying the leaves with a mild solution of water and a few drops of dish soap. One variation includes adding a pinch of cayenne pepper. Soapy water should be reapplied every two to three days for about two weeks. As well, you can try to attract beneficial insects like lady beetles, hoverflies, and lacewings, all of which are important aphid predators. Make sure to check all transplants for aphids before planting. And keep in mind that aphids aren't very mobile, so it's not uncommon to find one heavily affected plant surrounded by plants that are fine. If this is the case, simply remove and destroy the infected plant. Cucumber beetle. Brightly colored pests with either a green-yellow body with black spots or alternating black and yellow stripes. Typically, the adults will feed on leaves. Meanwhile, its larvae will burrow into the roots and stems. Cucumber beetles can then stunt the growth of seedlings and cause damage to a plant's leaves and stems. Eventually, plants will wilt and die. Here's what to do. Floating row covers can be used to protect plants from cucumber beetle damage, but these row covers will need to be removed once the plants are flowering to allow bees to pollinate. Applying kaolin clay can also be an effective solution against small numbers of beetles. Squash vine borers. At first, damage from these pests will cause plants to wilt in the hot sun. There might also be some holes near the base of the plant. As the squash vine borer infestation spreads, plants will eventually die. Here's what to do. Remove the borers by hand and destroy them. As well, destroy any crop residue after harvest. There are also traps that can be set by filling a yellow bowl or a container with water. Mature borers are attracted to the bright color of the bowl and will then get trapped by the water. Potential diseases and their solutions. Anthracnose. Small water-soaked spots will appear on a plant's leaves, and eventually those spots will get bigger and turn tan or brown in color with a papery texture. This disease thrives in extremely wet weather, and its spores are usually spread by splashing water. It can grow on any part of a plant, except for on the plant's roots. Here's what to do. Plant disease-resistant seeds when possible, and practice good crop rotation. In general, a three-year rotation is a good place to start. As well, avoid using sprinklers or overhead irrigation, and water plants from their base to keep leaves as dry as possible. As well, seeds can be treated with hot water prior to planting. 122 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 degrees Celsius for 25 minutes. If anthracnose is found on any plants, make sure to destroy and compost the crop residue after harvest. As well, make sure to follow recommended spacing guidelines since air circulation and ventilation is important for avoiding a lot of diseases. Finally, when planting in containers, it's important to sterilize those containers before use. Bacterial wilt. A disease that causes leaves to wilt on one or more vines, and eventually plants can die completely. Here's what to do. Remove and destroy any infected plants and control cucumber beetle populations that can spread the bacterial wilt disease. Cucumber mosaic virus. This virus causes ring spots and weird patterns to appear on the leaves of an affected plant. Those leaves will also become small, curled, and malformed. As well, leaves typically become dull gray and leathery. An early infection will affect the fruits in their size, shape, and overall quality. Here's what to do. Remove and destroy infected plants and control any aphid pests, since aphids spread the virus. Also, be sure to get rid of perennial weeds, like milkweed, marsh cress, and yellow rocket. Just make sure to wash your hands after touching any infected plants. Finally, Pacer, Market More 76, Slice Master, Dasher 2, Space Master, 
and Sweet Success are all varieties that are resistant to this disease. Downy Mildew. This fungal disease thrives in cool, humid climates. At first, downy mildew causes leaves to turn yellow, typically starting from the main vein, then spreading outward. Fungal spores that are grayish, purple, fuzzy spots will then grow on the undersides of leaves. Downy mildew typically affects young, tender leaves, and severe infections can also cause curled and distorted leaves. Sometimes those affected leaves can then become dehydrated and then drop from the plant entirely. When seedlings are affected, their growth is stunted, and downy mildew can also reduce crop yields while acting as an entry point for other diseases. When older plants are affected, in addition to the lesions they get, they will also seem more rigid and narrow as compared to healthy plants. Here's what to do. Plant resistant varieties when possible. Practice good crop rotation. Ensure good air circulation around plants and water plants early in the morning. This last tip gives the plants enough time to dry out during the day, making those plants less vulnerable to infection. Downy mildew is usually spread when leaves are wet for too long, so it also helps to avoid overhead watering. As well, be sure to keep weeds from growing. Once plants have downy mildew, the best thing to try is to eliminate moisture and humidity around the infected plants. If possible, try to improve their air circulation through selective pruning. In general, downy mildew normally clears itself up in an outdoor garden once the weather warms up, since it doesn't do well in warm temperatures. Also, if there are any infected plants, be sure to remove all crop remains after harvest to avoid reinfection, since this fungus can survive in crop residue. Keep in mind too that downy mildew is much easier to control when a plant's leaves and fruit are kept protected by a copper spray. Copper treatments can begin two weeks before the disease normally appears and when a long period of wet weather is in store. Copper treatments can also start when the disease first appears. Then those treatments can be repeated at seven to 10 day intervals for as long as the treatments are needed. Leaf spot. Circular, deep purple spots will first appear on the upper leaves. These spots then grow and the spots centers turn grayish to white on older leaves and light brown on young leaves. These spots will also have a defined reddish purple to rusty brown border. And as the spots grow, those spots dry out. The stems of affected plants will also wilt and severe infections can become an entry point for other rotting diseases. Here's what to do. Plant disease-free seeds when possible. Also avoid long leaf wetness by watering in the morning, avoiding overhead watering and by spacing plants properly. It helps to avoid working in the garden when plants are wet, since leaf spot is mainly spread by splashing water. As well, it's important to practice crop rotation. If leaf spot is present, remove any infected plants to prevent the disease from spreading. Powdery mildew. Small white patches will appear on the upper and lower leaf surfaces which might also show some purple blotching. Patches often come together to form a dense powdery layer, coating the leaves and causing the leaves to curl inward. In some cases, eventually the leaves will drop from the plant. Typically, the white patches start on the older leaves and then eventually spread to other plant parts. Powdery mildew is brought on by high humidity and moderate temperatures, 60 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, or 16 to 27 degrees Celsius, with symptoms becoming most severe in shaded areas. As well, this disease often acts as an entry point for other pests and diseases. Here's what to do. First, rotate crops so that members of the same family aren't planted in the same spot year after year. In general, a three-year rotation is a good place to start. Plant disease-resistant varieties when possible. 
and then provide good air circulation by not crowding the plants and by eliminating weeds. Water plants in the morning to give them enough time to dry out, taking care not to get the plant's leaves wet. Consider spraying infected plants with certain protectant, preventative fungicides. Sulfur, lime sulfur, neem oil, and potassium bicarbonate are all effective. But these remedies will work best when they are used before the infection happens or when signs of the disease are first spotted. Instead of chemical fungicides, plants can also be sprayed with a bicarbonate solution by simply mixing one teaspoon of baking soda in one quart of water. Make sure to spray the plants thoroughly since the solution will only kill fungi that it comes into contact with. Also, potassium bicarbonate which is similar to baking soda, can actually eliminate powdery mildew once it's there and does the job fairly quickly. As well, after the growing season, make sure to dispose of any infected leaves or fruit. Once plants are heavily infected with powdery mildew, it's difficult to get rid of the disease. So focus on preventing it from spreading to other plants. Scab. This fungus causes small water-soaked or pale green spots to appear on the leaves, and those leaves may seem ragged because of the cracking and tearing of their infected spots. On the fruits, there will be small, gray, lightly sunken, oozing spots that will only get bigger. As well, brownish-yellow lesions can grow on the roots. Oftentimes, scab is difficult to control since it stays in the soil for a long time. Here's what to do. Avoid getting the leaves of plants wet and water plants early in the day so that the plants can dry as quickly as possible. Also, avoid crowding plants by spacing the plants apart for better air circulation. Finally, be sure to remove any and all infected plants and then avoid planting in infected areas for about four years. For all varieties, fruits can easily be removed from their plant by cutting them with a sharp knife, slicing cucumbers. This variety can be harvested when the plants are about 6 to 8 inches, 15 to 20 centimeters long. Slicing varieties can be stored for 10 to 14 days at temperatures between 50 and 55 degrees Fahrenheit, 10 degrees and 12.8 degrees Celsius. Pickling cucumbers. This variety can be harvested when the plants are about 3 to 5 inches, 7.6 to 12.7 centimeters long. This variety is best stored when pickled in a jar of vinegar. Note, do not let the fruit become overripe. This will signal to the plant that the seed development is almost done and it will start to shut down. After this point, no more cucumbers will be produced. <laughs>